This video is all about headers, or is it called the navigation? Or is it called the linky bit at the top? But seriously, I don't think the web design industry can agree on a term to call these things. But for the sake of this video, let's call it the website navigation, as these bits are also commonly called headers too. A website's navigation is on every page, and it's pretty important, and it's not something you want to fuck up. In this video, we'll cover everything about them and learn how to make yours properly and how to avoid some mistakes that you may be making with yours. Specifically, we'll cover the uses and types of navigations, the designs navigations can have, and hopefully providing you with some inspiration. Then we'll touch on some navigation related statistics and case studies. After that, we'll touch on the exceedingly boring topic of accessibility. Then for all you SEO Google Analytics circle jerkers, I will touch on the SEO impact that navigations have. And lastly, we'll look at some ways to make your navigation better, as well as some things to avoid. And basically, I'll summarize everything to do and not to do. And just as a bonus, at the end of the video, I'll show you the worst navigation I've ever seen. And let's jump straight into number one, the uses and types of navigations. A website's navigation mainly has three uses. One is to link to desired pages of your website so users can get to it easily. Another one is to identify the identity of the website or company that it represents. And the last use for a navigation is, it's for conversions. You can add important actions you want your users to perform by adding in buttons or adding in items to your navigation. But we'll touch on navigation CTAs in the statistics part of the video more. Some other uses include a search bar, helpful information, or if your website is e-commerce, then shopping cart or account functionality. Now, navigations have a lot more uses than just those three, like how it can be used to tell what page you're on, or how it can answer questions like, does this site have what I'm looking for? But we'll end it as that, because you understand the importance navigations have by now. As for types of navigations, there is the standard at the top kind, and then there are also sticky navigations, which follow you and stay at the top of the page as you scroll down. Most of the time, I would recommend every website have a sticky navigation. It's important for users to be able to jump between pages as quickly and effortly as possible. Overall, all navigations by minimum should have a logo and menu links. It's up to you how you want to take it further by adding more than that, but it should be able to answer the questions, who are you and what important pages of the site there are. All right, let's talk about the design of these things. When it comes to the design of navigations, they can come in many different flavors. They can be on the left side, they can be icon based, or sometimes the utility of the navigation can be hidden away behind a button to reveal its contents. We'll talk about that particular style more in the what to avoid part of the video. And then there are even navigations that have little descriptions under it to help the user better understand what the page is about. These guys get away with this design because they only have five menu items, but generally speaking, your menu label should be intuitive enough that you don't need descriptions. So you probably don't want to follow that particular design. For the menu itself inside your navigation, the most common dropdown looks like this, where they are simple vertical items in a list. However, when it comes to bigger websites with a lot of links, usually e-commerce websites, you can do what's called a mega menu, which contains columns of links sometimes alongside images as well. We'll touch on the effectiveness of these mega menus in the statistics part of the video. Something I rarely see, which is out there, is horizontal drop-down menus. Though I wouldn't recommend this layout. I did mention it in my 50 web design mistakes video, which I'll link in the description if you want to check out. It's just a less common way of laying out a drop-down. And so the less common it is, the harder for the average user it'll be to use. If you want to make your top navigation even more useful and possibly increase conversions, you can leave contact information at the top. Usually designs do this by having a colored strip to get some attention or just to separate it from the lower part of the menu. I would also recommend doing this if your website's idea of a conversion is someone contacting you, but only if your design allows for it. You don't want your navigation to be too crowded. It's also very common to have a search bar in your navigation, especially if the website is e-commerce. I personally wouldn't recommend having a search bar on your site if it has less than 40 pages. If you do have one, it definitely wouldn't belong to the navigation at that scale. The last design related part we'll touch on is how your navigation should change for mobile sizes. 
When on smaller screens, the menu item should always hide and go behind a hamburger menu icon. One mistake I see people trying to do, which I mentioned in my 50 web design mistakes video if you want to check it out, is they use some custom hamburger menu icon that looks so much not like a menu icon that users don't know it's actually a menu button. Inside the mobile menu, you should obviously have all your links, but you can also make it more useful by adding things like a search bar, a newsletter sign up, or social media icons. One design trend with navigations that's worth following is a particular kind of sticky navigation. These navigations will hide as you scroll down, but if you scroll up at all, it'll slide down and appear. I would recommend doing this to whatever website you have because it makes it a lot easier for users to get around your site. And if a user is scrolling up, there's a solid chance they're trying to get back to the navigation, so it saves time for them. Now we're going to talk about statistics and case studies. We will look at some case studies that have been done so we know what kind of navigation changes we should make backed up by real world data. All of this should help the user experience of our site or improve conversions or click-through rates. The first case study I have to show you is about mega menus, precisely the difference in clicks from having one versus not having one. An A-B test was done on a Shopify website named Aflora. They tested the difference between their normal click-based menu compared to a mega menu that has products shown in a dropdown. With this change, they concluded it increased their revenue by 53%. They go on to mention a couple things about their findings, like how this disproves the need for mega menus for small e-commerce websites, and how this can be contributed to increasing product findability, reducing bounce rates, and having an iPleaser header as a menu layout. The next case study has to do with showing and hiding the menu entirely on a sales page. By having their menu normally there, their conversions were around 3%. When they hid the menu, they jumped to 6%. So it doubled their conversions. This is because when you hide the navigation on a sales or checkout page, users can't easily click away from it, reducing the conversions. Of course, you never want to hide your navigation on your normal website's pages. But if you have a page where you almost don't want the users to navigate away from, it's a good trick. The next case study is a simple one. Orbit Media Studios looked at 500 websites and found that 55% of them use a button in the top right, making it a web design convention. Which means you should probably have it on your website too, because statistically, most websites have them, therefore it would be expected and familiar for most users to use. It also gives you the opportunity for more conversions, so there's that too. That was just a little simple statistic, but it's something to add on to your pile of what to do with your navigation. This last case study is my favorite of them all. It's evidence against one particular web design mistake I'm particularly passionate about critiquing every time I see it. And it has to do with showing menus versus hiding it behind a menu toggle button. I see so many websites trying to do this trend and try to make their website seem more minimal or cleaner, but I always thought of it as an extra step to get to the navigation. So let's see what the NN group has found with their usability testing. They ran a study measuring the effectiveness between a navigation being visible, hidden, or a combination of the two. They measured the effectiveness by five different metrics. Navigation use, whether participants use the navigation links at all. Time to navigation. The time from the beginning of the task until the first use of the navigation in the task. Task difficulty, participants' assessments of the task difficulty. Content discoverability, whether or not participants were able to discover the content on the site. And task time, the time it took to complete these tasks. And the results? Are you ready for this, Chad? They found that when the navigation was hidden, the navigation was used less, it took longer to navigate through the site, the site was more difficult to find content, and overall was more difficult to use, and doing basic navigation related tasks took longer. And that was the desktop numbers. The numbers on mobile still indicated that a visible or a combination of the visible and hidden was still more effective than hidden, but not by much, because it's expected to have your navigation behind a button on mobile. So what this means is on desktop sizes, your navigation should always be visible. It should not be behind a menu button. All right, that was the case studies. Now we're gonna to touch on accessibility as quickly as possible. Basically, make sure your menu is an unordered list element in that it is using the nav HTML tag. 
and then make sure it has an ARIA label, which should probably be something like primary menu. And this is for assistant technology tools to better understand what that navigation is for. And then make sure you indicate what the current page is by using the area current tag. Before you freak out, WordPress takes care of all of this for you, so no need to worry. One other thing to think about with accessibility is hover menus. Basically, if you have a bunch of these submenus going on that are hover activated, you end up creating these things called hover tunnels, where a user has to follow a certain pattern to get to where they want to go without accidentally getting outside the menu, otherwise it'll disappear. It's kind of like playing that operation game where you can't touch the metal sides, or the maze game where you can't touch the walls. And so, to make this more accessible and less annoying to users, you can use a click toggle. So instead of hovering, users just click to open up the dropdown. And so they don't have to worry about accidentally getting outside the dropdown. But there's also another thing you can do. You can create these things called trajectory path triangles, so the menus stay open when a user accidentally gets into the area. Basically, you do this using CSS to extend the content area of the dropdown. And finally, it's good practice to make sure your website is accessible by using the keyboard, like using tab to get around the navigation and open dropdowns, as well as highlight any menu icons when you have them selected. All right, everybody, it's time to open up your $200 a month SEMrush accounts. We're gonna talk about the SEO impact of your navigation. From what I can see, there's not too much to talk about here, but there are a few things. The first thing to know is that you are telling Google that the pages in your navigation are the most important pages, and so Google's going to look at them with more priority. So this means your random orphaned linked page is not important in Google's eyes as your about page is linked in your navigation on every page. Now, it's actually kind of hard to express this effect happening, but generally speaking, the more page views a page has, the more time that's spent on the page, and the more it's interacted with, Google will see that as a more important page. There also may be a benefit to linking pages in your navigation because Google will have an easier time finding them and indexing them sooner. Now, that's about it for technical SEO, but probably the biggest and most impactful SEO thing you can do to your navigation is just to provide the best user experience possible. If your navigation is clearly organized and users can easily find what they're looking for, then that will lead to a better click-through rate and engagement and that all leads to better SEO. Basically, just make your navigation easier to use and more useful, and people will use it more. You can make this more interesting by adding a mega menu to encourage clicks, or by tweaking the menu labels to make them sound more clickable and interesting, like these guys who made a similar change and doubled their conversions by changing why choose us to how it works. Check the link in the description for that case study. Now we're going to move on to how to make your navigation better, as well as some things to avoid. We'll restate and summarize a couple different things we've already touched on throughout this video, just to keep it concise. And then we'll end on the worst menu I've ever seen on any website. So these will just be some guidelines, you don't need to treat them like the law, but the more of these you follow, the better your navigation will be in some sort of way. First up, make sure your navigation has a logo on the top left. A menu should be somewhere in the middle, and a call to action should be on the right. This is a web design standard, which means more than 80% of websites follow it. So you should do it to be consistent and keep your website familiar for people to use. Next up is to always show your navigation on desktop. Don't hide it behind a hamburger menu because this hurts user experience, makes your website harder to use, and it should only be done on mobile. If your menu needs to be behind a hamburger menu because there's not enough space, then your design has failed. Then, if your site is e-commerce, make sure you have some sort of mega menu that shows pictures of the products or product categories. According to the case study we saw, this should increase revenue and conversions. One little thing I'll tack on to the end here is that you shouldn't be having your social media icons in your navigation. Social media is just too addicting and engaging. You can't expect people to click on one of those social media links and not get distracted by golden retriever videos like I do. Another thing you should always do is use little indicators to indicate when there's a drop down for a menu item. A lot of websites don't do this and it makes it really confusing to whether or not there's more links or not. And as I said in the beginning, for fun, I wanna show you the worst navigation I found. Now, any site could have a shit navigation, but to win this prize, your website has to be popular. Otherwise, your bad navigation doesn't mean much. So without further ado, this is the worst menu I've ever seen. 
medium.com. Medium.com is a really popular website. You've probably come across it before. You've probably read a blog post or two from their site just because it's so big. But when you go to the site, you immediately see why I hate this menu. There's no labels to see what these icons link you to. You have to hover over them individually to be able to see where they take you. All right, so this is me recording after the fact. Uh, when I started making this video, this is what the menu looked like on medium.com. But if you check now, they've actually updated the design. Now it looks like this. So this menu design is so fucked up that they actually had to switch it. They probably got some bad numbers or feedback on the old design, which is why they switched it. But it still could be better. Uh, I could link to actual different article topics around the site or maybe trending ones or, or anything. But currently it just has kind of stuff associated to your account, which is annoying because I'm not even signed in and it's showing all this. So awesome. And as a bonus, what the fuck is this logo? If you haven't seen it, check out the everything about footers video I did, which is very similar to this one. I hope I earned your subscription today. The day of making this video, I'm almost at 2,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for everyone that's joined me so far.